worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Jesus Christ the Lord. Oh, let's worship Him, Jesus Christ the Lord. Oh, let's worship Him, Jesus Christ the Lord. For we are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around. So let's just praise Jesus now, for we are standing in God's presence on holy ground, for this is holy ground we are standing on holy ground for where the presence of the lord is holy ground for this is holy ground hallelujah we're standing on holy ground for where the presence of the lord it's holy ground yes this is holy ground hallelujah we're standing on holy ground for where the presence of the lord it's holy ground we shout hallelujah we say thank you jesus on tonight hallelujah 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 we are standing on holy ground oh we are standing in god presence tonight and it's holy ground blessed be the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah father we come into your presence we have passed the gates of praise mighty god we come hallelujah into your sanctuary oh God to lift up your great and holy name tonight oh God we know you to be the God of Isaac God of Jacob God of Abraham you are the triune God hallelujah the one that sit high and look low we bless your name hallelujah for this is the day that you have made we will rejoice and be glad in it mighty God tonight I ask that you will just wash us afresh from the crown of our our heads to the sole of our feet mighty god of daniel i ask that you'll purify this atmosphere purify our hearts oh god purify our mind our thoughts our deeds hallelujah oh god almighty I pray, God, as we come tonight for another session in Bible studies, I pray, God Almighty, that you will increase us in knowledge and understanding. Give us wisdom, O oh God. Father, I pray for great revelations. I pray that you will touch the heart, the mind, and the soul of your people. O oh God Almighty, as we gravitate, as we seek you, O oh God, I pray that you will reveal unto us, O oh God Almighty, the 
secrets of the kingdom. Father, tonight I thank you, oh God, for our bishop, Bishop Marlon Trowers. I pray, God, that you'll cover him under the blood. Cover each and every member of Christ like worship center. Remember us, oh God. Lord, we bless you. We honor you. We glorify. We magnify. We lift you up. We say thank you for all you have done and all you're about to do. Without you, we are nothing. And by ourselves, we can do nothing. So tonight, God, we lay everything in your hands and we release our burdens under your control. And we say, Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Bless God, everyone. Good night. Could you just put your hands together for the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, welcome into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to greet the Holy Spirit tonight, who is the head of my life. I want to thank God for Bishop Mullen Showers. Hallelujah. Our Bishop, I bless God for him. I pray his strength in the name of Jesus. Thank God for Minister Watkins, Minister Forbes in his absence all the deacons, hallelujah, and all the lovely saints of Christ-like worship center. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I also want to greet those that are watching online via Facebook or YouTube. We bless God for you and we welcome you into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank God. Tonight, I would like for you to stand with me and just turn your Bibles to the book of St. Matthew chapter 25. You're going to read from verse 1 through to verse 13. That's Matthew chapter 25. See, Matthew 25 is a part of the New Testament. Bless God. We are going to be reading from verse 1 through to verse 13. Hallelujah. I pray and I trust that everyone had a wonderful day. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're there. St. Matthew 25 from verse 1 through to 13. You could look at the monitors. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be lightened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go he out to meet him. Then all those virgin, uh, virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Thirteen and last together, watch therefore, for he know neither the day nor the hour we're in the Son of Man comet. We bless the word of God tonight by saying glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, word without end. Amen. Bless God. We thank God for his word. We thank God for those of you that are already here, and we pray that those that are on their way will hasten their footsteps. Bless God. So we all know and we are all familiar with the scripture of the 10 virgins. Anybody here don't know about the 10 virgins? We all know about the 10 virgins. Amen. We probably learned of it back in Sunday school while we were growing up. Bless God. And we learned of it. We heard it preach over and over again. But anybody ever stop to look into the true meaning of what 
the five wise virgin meant and what the five foolish virgin meant and what the oil represent and what the lamp represent. Anybody ever stop and said, you know what? I am going to analyze myself, my life and see if I am a foolish virgin or if I'm a wise virgin. Everybody wants to identify as a wise virgin, right? All if we're foolish, we will try to pretend that we are wise amen because nobody wants to be labeled as foolish good night bless god hallelujah but truth and in fact if we analyze and we look into the scripture in depth and we read with understanding and we get the revelatory knowledge from which god used in this parable because it's a parable bless god with a hidden code hidden codes are in it so one of the code is wise, one is foolish. One of the code that is hidden in the parable is lamp and oil. Bless God. Another code is the bridegroom. Bless God. And the marriage supper. Amen. So if we really take the time to sit down and analyze, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, like I did, bless God, while I was getting um, the, 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 the text together for tonight, we will see where we lie. We will see where we stand. Let's use the word stand. We will see where we are standing in our salvation. We will see where we are standing in Christ. Sometimes we think that we are standing, but indeed we are falling. Amen? Bless God. So tonight, my uh, scripture is taken from Matthew 25, reading from verse 1 through to verse 13. And as we are going to dig in tonight, I want you to write down any questions that you may have. You might not ask me about it, but you could go to God in prayer about it. Amen. You could pray about it. And if there's anything that you identify while we are going through the scripture tonight that is in you, you can pray about it. And where we need to do better, we will do better and we will do it together. Amen. Amen, church. Because you're not, we are not in this alone. We all need each other. Bless God. And I need you and you need me. Amen. When you look at it, we are all together as a family. Different members, different gifts. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But it's one spirit and it's one body. And our aim and destination is we are heaven. Bless God. But we cannot go to heaven as fools. We have to be wise bless god so tonight the first word that i am going to look at with you hallelujah is the word bless god thank you jesus uh what does the the, the phrase not a word what does the phrase wise bless god wise represent the wise virgin what do you think that part of the par parable represent the wise virgin would represent the body of Christ, the people that are in the body of Christ, that are living, not just showing up for church, but are living for Christ. The songwriter said, if I'm not living for Christ, I cannot be happy. I only live my life to please the Lord. So if you're living a lifestyle and you're living as a wise Christian, Bless God, you are living to please God, even to your own hurt. Somebody said to my own hurt, how will I be pleasing God and I'm, and I'm living to my own hurt? Bless God, yes, because sometimes the truth becomes an offense to family members, to friends, to co-workers, hallelujah. And when you speak the truth, and they're offended, bless God, they in turn will want to hurt you or turn on you or do things to you that will make you hurt. So if you decide that I'm going to be a wise Christian, I know that God does not like lies. I heard somebody said white lies, black lies, no lies. God like no lies. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You cannot be living for God and entertaining the little things that are ungodly sometimes it's not the big things you know people think oh i'm not going to the clubs so it's okay oh i'm not drinking i know i don't get drunk bless god i'm not i'm not doing this but what about the little black lies and the little white lies 
What about the things that we do and we say, the thoughts that come into our heads, hallelujah, that we ponder, bless God. What about the act of being covetous, malicious, bless God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you might think, oh, I am, I, I am a peacemaker. But as soon as you hear something about Mother Johnson, bless God, you run to, 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 to Mother Titus and you said, Mother Titus, you hear this, you hear that, and you, you, you gossip and you carry. Don't you think that that's a part of not living um, wise? A wise person would seek peace and pursue it. Bless God. Wise people. Try to stay out of gossips and mix up and things that let them uh, fit in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, with the masses. And some of us, if we are not rolling with the masses, we feel like nothing is happening. The masses is not always right. Sometimes they're just a big barrel that is empty and making a lot of noise. Amen. Even the very, the Bible tells us. Hallelujah, that a foolish person sitting down in a crowd that everybody's busy and buzzing and this person could be well-dressed but is foolish. Bless God, listen to me keenly. Foolish, foolish, foolish. Bless God, no nothing, total novice. But when their mouth is shut and they're well put together, you will think such a one is wise. But once they opened them, I said, Jesus, have mercy. Come up large. Amen. Bless God. In Jamaica, growing up as young, young females in the community, you will hear the older women many times when they counsel the young ladies. Amen. They will say, you have no integrity. Your face only stands security for your body. You ever hear that saying before? It means that you have a face and you look like you're, 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 you're well put together and you look like you're kept. But behind all that, the face is just a security. You have nothing about you. Nobody would, no good family would want you, take, would want you to marry to their husband, girl. Hmm? Because you're a foolish virgin. Amen. Anybody ever, ever have a brother that bring home a, 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 a girlfriend or somebody to mama? And when they reach to the door and they come in, mama said, what do it? You couldn't do better than that. Huh? You couldn't do better than that. Come on. You couldn't do better. So, 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 is it that tree is growing in your face? Why, why you have to go there? Do you know that nothing good come from that family? Or they will use things like, um, oh, I come off a good tablecloth. You know, you know, you're not stuck. I'm old. My God. Am I an old lady in a young body, Minister Hotkiss? <laughs> Minister is looking at me like, what is she saying? Bless God. But it's true. These are the things that I grew up. I grew up around mature folks. Bless God. That was very strict and very stern. So we would grow up in a specific kind of way. There were certain companies that I was not allowed to keep. As a matter of fact, while I was in high school, I was having too much fun. And my mother, oh my God. She moved me. I only have one year left to graduate high school. And my mother was so strict, bless God, that she moved me out of high school because she think that I was hanging out with foolish crowd. Amen. And she moved me into a boarding school. What a woman. I cried day and night for three months. I, I had no peace. I just wanted to go home. And I could not. I was stuck there. Bless God. But after everything, I realized that she was wise. Because I was going down a path that is foolish. Amen. When you're young and people are trying to talk to you, you can't see. You think that, oh, everything bothers you. Oh, my God. Lord Jesus. Nothing is, no, nothing is wrong if the lamp shade don't clean. We could put it on. It's still giving light. huh? But they're saying, no, go wash the lamp shade. Use the gleaner paper, get the smallest hand to put up in there, clean it nice, and put on the home sweet home lamp. There's something about home sweet home lamp shades. Anybody ever got any of those? I grew up with lamps. Oh my goodness. I'm a country girl. So I grew up where there are times when there was no electricity. Hmm? Most time it was the lamps. 
So I am, when I read this here, the trimming of the lamps, I knew how to trim lampshades. I knew how to pour oil. I knew how to ensure that the, the oil stayed. Amen. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Because I grew up in a home where we use lamps. So all of you who do have your light, you switch on or you switch off. Sorry, you missed the nice part. Amen. Bless God. Because we grew up with lamps. And when we don't have no lamps, we have what? Candle. Our bottle torch. Come on. Hallelujah. No, we grew up in England and Canada. And we grew up all, uh, in all the cities where they have the lights. But the, we're getting back now to the wise virgins. The wise virgins are virgins who stand for the principle of God. Wise virgin, hallelujah. Here in this text represent people who are oiled. The oiled, hallelujah, represent that they're living connecting to the Holy Spirit. They're consecrated. They're set apart. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. So we are all on a journey together. Hallelujah. And truth to be told, there are some Christians that are foolish and there are some that are wise because some people will allow no one or nothing to get between them and their God. Now to be a wise virgin, it means that your mind Hallelujah. Your spirit, thank you, Jesus. Your lifestyle has to be in tune. So you're not saying one thing with your mouth. Bless God. You're not saying holy, holy with your mouth. And your body is doing something else. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Everything synchronized. Everything is steady. Everything is in one. Hallelujah. They are connected. They are set apart. They will not allow anything to get them on the wrong side or outside of the presence of God. Being foolish can take us out of the will of God. Being foolish, bless God, thank you Jesus, can allow us to miss out on blessings. Allow us to miss out on the bridegroom. Bless God, thank you Jesus. So the wise virgin church, get it, please. Bless God, they represent a people within the body of Christ that is connected. They are consecrated and they are set apart. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. They know the word of salvation. Hallelujah. They have worked out their own salvation with fear and with trembling. Bless God. Hallelujah. They know the truth. They know who Christ is. They know what it costs. Hallelujah. On Calvary for him to die in their stead. And they decide. Hallelujah. Come hell or I water. I will not miss heaven. So they are not looking to the left or to the right. These are a group that stay in the word. They live the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They are not backsliding in their hearts, but dressing up and coming to church in clothing that make them look like they're on their way. Can, do you know that you have people who are dressed for church, but in their hearts, they're on their way to hell? Nobody answering me because they think that first that is not possible. Oh, yes. There are people who are backslidden in their hearts, but they still show up to church because, oh, Lord, if I don't go to church, Mother Titus is going to call. So I'm just going to go to church. And if I don't go to church, Bishop is going to call. So I'm just going to go to church. But in your heart, you're not there. Bless God. And God does not look on the outward appearance. So you might be coming to church, and you're dressed for church, hallelujah, in your churchly attire, but your heart is nowhere. Your heart is far from God. Remember tonight, people, us humans, we look on the outward appearance, but God looks on your heart. Amen. He knows the intent of your heart and he knows where you stand with him. Tonight, I encourage all of us, let us get wise. Bless God. Let us get wise on this journey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us weigh our own self on the scale and work out our own salvation with fear and with trembling. Bless God. The foolish virgins represents unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? It means that they're not in good standing with God. But you see, what they do, they still show up. They still show up to meet the bridegroom. So the foolish virgins, they represent what? 
What they represent, church? They represent, they represent, they represent unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. Bless God. I'm going to read something here. Bless God. It says that the wise virgins were those who led virtuous lives and were therefore prepared to enter heaven. So they live ready. Live ready. Bless God. Live ready. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen a bride getting ready for her wedding day? And when they show up at the church, she has no veil, no gown. All she has on is a slip. Everybody would be asking, what's going on? Where is the dress? Yeah, Sister, Sister Justet would probably say, I could wear here for her. And why she didn't say something? Hallelujah. You have to live ready. You can't be half ready. You have to be ready. Bless God. Bless God. The foolish virgins are those that are unrighteous. They are unrighteous women who are unprepared for the coming of the bridegroom. Who is the bridegroom? Christ. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. And the consequence of not being ready is you're going to be shut out. The door is going to be shut on you and no man can open it. Doesn't that sound familiar? What story we heard that? Remember Noah and the ark? There was a set of people who were foolish that lives in the time of Noah. Amen? Can you imagine living in a country, or let's just look at our community, and you're the only safe family in town? Huh? Everybody call you fool, laugh at you, bless God, they let you feel out of place, bless God, but you still hold on, knowing that there is a savior, knowing that he's coming back, hallelujah, knowing that it doesn't matter how much they laugh at me or talk about me, I know something that for sure is coming back. Huh? You live, he lives in a country. He lives in a time where nobody reverence God. They all did foolish things. They, 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 they would parade. They would, have, they would laugh at him even while he made the ark. Because there was no rain back in those days. Huh? So they, they, they laugh at him. Because he was making a boat and there was no water for this big, gigantic boat. Bless God. But after God was finished with the boat. Amen. After the project and the assignment of this boat was complete. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Noah was ready. Hallelujah. And everything was checked at the baggage counter. Hallelujah. Every animal was on. His family was on. Hallelujah. Everything that he need was on the boat. The ark. Something happened. And then the foolish people start to bang in. Oh, Uncle Noah, Daddy Noah, Papa Noah, Grandpa, and they call him all the name. Hallelujah. You know people have a way how they sweet us up. Hallelujah. And they cry and they scream. And Noah, you see, Noah wanted to open the door. No, There's going to come a time in your life when things are going to be out of your control. It's going to all be in the hands of God. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you are going to be crying and say, God, please, just, just one more chance. Give them another. And God shut the door. He sealed it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So when the door is shut, no man can open it. Matter of fact, he is the door. He said, I am the door. So when he shut the door, tell me who can open the door. Bless God, because he is the door and he have the key. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So it doesn't matter how much you stay there, you batter and you cry. He's going to say, depart. I know you not. You will live a life unrighteously. Hallelujah. To be unrighteous, meaning that you're not in right standing with God. If we are living an unrighteous life and we know it, let us get ourselves in line. Bless God. We don't want to be on the 
other side. Oh, God Almighty. It, it, that is the reason why the Bible said it's going to be a weeping, mourning, gnashing of teeth. Because who can bear, oh, God Almighty, standing outside the portal? Who can bear being dressed? Hallelujah. You have your ticket. Bless God. And you're ready. Thank you, Jesus, to board the flight. And when you get up to the gate, they said, sorry, the plane leave. Happened to us. Plane leave. How did the plane leave? Huh? We are ready. We wait. We were sitting at the right gate. You're at the right gate. Your bags are already on the plane. And you walk up to the, to the gate to board. And they said, huh? That flight just leave. What do you do? You're thinking in your head, oh my God. My bags are going somewhere. I am here. Everything that I own, that I, uh, that, that I have a value, that I have plans for, is gone. Out of your control. So you start to be ants. There will be no time to get another flight. It's only one flight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have your tickets tonight, church? Do you have your ticket tonight? Hallelujah. Do you have your tickets for glory tonight? Bless God. Hallelujah. 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 We need to have our tickets. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that is sweet salvation. That is the ticket to heaven. Is a lifestyle. Hallelujah. That is, is in, in right standing with God. We are connected, consecrated, and set apart for the master's use. Be ready. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. So the word says that, hallelujah, the, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Is it, it, the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, hallelujah, which took their lamps. Took their lamps. So they all have lamps. They took their lamps. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And went forth to meet the bridegroom. And it says five were wise. And we know who were the wise now, right? Bless God. We have a better understanding of the wise. And we also know who the foolish ones were. And the, they, they that were foolish took lamps and took no oil with them. How is it that you're a child of God? And you're born again, saved and sanctified, but you're dry. Oil lubricates. Oil will oil allow or causes uh, things to move freely. So if you feel dry as a Christian, check your oil. You have the engine thing. Sometimes I said, uh, Bishop, I don't like how the car feel. Uh, I, I think the oil, something is wrong with it. I don't, my father's a mechanic. I don't really know much about no tech testing of no oil. Bless God, because back home, they just drive a car. They don't really check anything. Bless God, they do one fix. Bless God. But here you have to check. The, 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 the lamp will come up and say that the oil needs change. Now, oil, hallelujah. Back in the ancient time, the oil that the, that, that the Lord uh, commanded the priests to use. It was only exclu it was exclusively only for the priests. So let's say a bishop would be the only person that have access to the olive oil. Amen. Bless God. It, it carries a great significance. It was not common. So is your salvation. It's not common. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And only the priests would have access to the oil. They will get the olives and they will beat it. Hallelujah. And the oil will come and the priest will use that oil. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. So the oil, hallelujah, that the virgins carry, they knew that the lamps cannot work without oil. What good is a lamp in a big house without oil? It has no use. Just like us. What use are us to the Lord? If we are not clean, he cannot use our vessels. If we are not living a pure life, he cannot use us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There are some people, they are operated and their oil is tainted. 
Yesterday, oil is not good for today because what? We have to renew our mind daily, church of God. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you'll have, you know, be having a good day. Let me speak for myself. I'll be having a good day and I'm having a jolly time. Hallelujah. And I'm feeling good. But I learned something today. It took me a few years to learn it. That if your mind is not occupied with the things of God, the devil will try to find something to occupy it. Be very careful. Amen. You could be going along your jolly good day, having a jolly good time, thinking about nothing. Hallelujah. Your mind is not on God, but you're just there probably in the bathroom and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to use the bathroom. I'm going to go downstairs and make me a sandwich. All of a sudden, the devil has put something in your head. And it throws you off because he messes with your emotion. Hallelujah. And he just pull you out of your jolly good time because that's what his desire for us to do. He loves to see us in agony. If you're dry, he's going to use you. He's going to oil you down. The devil, hallelujah, his duty is to get you out of the will of God. But when you're oiled, when you're fully oiled, it simply means that you have a prior life. Hallelujah. You fast, you pray, you seek the face of God. The things of God excites you. The things of God, hallelujah, make you come alive. Have you ever seen some plants? They sell them now over by own depot. They call them oh, impatience. I never know that's their name. In Jamaica, we call them. Um, what? Oh my goodness. We have a name for them. Sleeping Mary. So, something like so. Yes, that's the name. So, when the sun comes, they open bright. Their they're, they're, the name is impatient. They're, they open bright. But at evening, when the sun goes down, they close. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. You're, 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 when, you're, when you're living for God, thank you, Jesus, you will be blooming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You will be so in tune that you sniff the enemy. Hallelujah. From a mile. You know what the enemy is coming with. The Lord will give you dreams. He will give you visions. He will put you, hallelujah, in order before the problem hits home. Hallelujah. So even if the problem hits home, your mind is already in the place that guess what? I know it was coming. So now, how do I deal with it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank God that I can deal with it because I'm not going to deal with it alone. Because if God wanted you to deal with it alone, he will not show you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we can't escape the accident, but God is in it with us. Hallelujah. And God will take us through it. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, oil. Every Christian, you need to maintain the oil. You need to be in relationship with God. Be in right standing with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Stay in the word. You might not be able to read the word. Hallelujah. Because you may not have gone to school. But you can listen. There is so much outlets that we have now that can keep us in line with God. Hallelujah. We don't want to be foolish virgins. We don't want to think dressing up in our Sunday best every Sunday to come to church that me and, and looking like we are on the way to glory means that we are going to glory. No, because many of us, including myself, if we are not careful, we are going to reach up to the gate and the door is going to be shut. Because what? Hallelujah. We did not do the right thing. We need oil. Come on, look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we need oil. We need oil. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We need oil in our lamps to keep it burning. We need to keep stay ablaze for Christ. Some people have lost their zeal. Hallelujah. When you meet Jesus, you don't even want food. You didn't want to eat. Food was like nothing. It's like falling in love. You're on the phone and you can't get off. Bless God. Hallelujah. You can't wait for the next date. You can't wait for the next service. You can't wait for the next prayer meeting. You can't wait to share your testimony. Hallelujah. Of how you feel God. Of how, what you experience. But over time, like every relationship, if your oil is not flowing, if you're not at that place, 
you're going to feel like I'm not in love anymore. This thing is boring. I want a new love. Anybody ever said, I don't want a new love? Nobody's going to. Nobody wants to answer me. Hallelujah. There is a song that said, I'm searching for a new love. Bless God. I want a new love. No, you don't need a new love. You need to work on your love. Bless God. Hallelujah. Because if every time you feel that way, you want a new love, something is wrong. So you go love, 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 love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. After a while, people's going to take you for a joke. So you have to put work in. Just like every relationship, we have to put work into the relationship with God. Spending time with the Lord matters. Hallelujah. Nobody is, seems like they're in agreement with me tonight. Just me alone. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hear Sister Logan saying amen. You know, I can always depend on Sister Logan and my husband too. Thank you, Jesus. You go, Bishop. I love you. Amen. And I'm not looking for a new love. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. We need to work on our love. Especially married couple. I love when I touch on the married couple. Let me know. Let me see them straighten up. Yes. Nobody knows who I'm talking. We need to work on our love. Our love for Christ. Our love for our children. Some of us, our children get on our nerves so much that sometimes we see them, we hold them in contempt. You ever hear Judge Judy say, I'm going to hold you in contempt of court if you speak again? Sometimes I say, Judah, just go to your room. But mom, Judah, please, if you say one more word, the other day I said to Judah, I said, Judah, if you say one more word, that's it. He said, Mom, what do you mean? I'm your kid. You know they have a word for everything. Hallelujah. So it makes sense you don't even you tell them to go to their room anymore. You know, first time, my mother would just look at me. Oh, my God. Look, when I get a good whooping, it would be because I know what mommy looks mean, and I just did not care. But if mommy look at me two times, it means that the first look was you're going to get a beaten. And the second look, I'm going. So guess, guess what? Just a look. But nowadays, you could be looking, looking. They look right back. Nobody move. Amen? Exactly. Exactly. These kids, they don't care. But we have to love them. So we have to work on the love between our children too. Because sometimes the devil wants to pull them one way and we want to keep them on the straight and narrow because the word said we are to grow them up. Hallelujah. Thank, and the beauty of it is when you live in your household and there is oil. Hallelujah. There'll be an overflow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because it will come off you and it will flow on your children. It will flow. Hallelujah. Thank, and that is the reason why if you're the only Christian in your house, stay ablaze. Because if you allow the masses to put the fire out, you're going to be like them. But when you are ablaze and when you are the light, they that are in darkness will see and they will come. They will come taste. Hallelujah. And see that the Lord is good. So we have to work on our love for the Lord. Because if we don't work on it, we are going to be dry we're going to be Christians without oil and everybody coming in and singing and praising. And we are like, one time I used to be like that, but just give them nine days or three months or six months. They're going to be like me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because I used to feel what they feel, but I don't feel it anymore. Anybody ever been there where you don't feel the way you used to feel about God? You feel like your prayers are not answered. You feel, hallelujah, like it's a burden to serve the Lord and to do anything for him. Bless God. When I walk in tonight and I saw the sanctuary, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, the, the, how it was, how it's clean and, and everything. And I saw the, the, how the ladies, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, how they took, they took joy. Hallelujah. In taking care of the house of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It does something to me. It does something to me. Hallelujah. Because this is the way how they, it, it might not mean much to others, but this is them saying, God, this is what I find to do with my hands. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm sure that while they're here and they're doing, they're praying over the cheers. They're whispering a word for their bishop. They're praying for their first lady. They're praying for the members. Hallelujah. So they too are in some way or form keeping the oil going. Amen.
You can't be dry all the time. And Christians, let us get to the point where we stop blaming people. It is your salvation. Stop blaming people. Stop making excuses as to why I'm not going to do this or as to why I'm not doing that. Why? It's your salvation. It's yours. Your husband does not have a right to your salvation. You have no right to his. Nobody, church sister or church brother, have a right to your salvation. People can influence you. But how is it that you, a wise virgin, will allow a foolish virgin to influence you? So you're on your way to hell with your lamp full? Huh? You would, in Jamaica, say, beat yourself. Beat yourself ten times over. If you sit in Christ, hallelujah, doing everything that you're supposed to do and allow a foolish virgin. And when I say foolish virgin, I'm not just talking about females, males and females alike, because in Christ there is no gender. Hallelujah. We are all sons of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. Thank you. Are you going to allow somebody that did not die for you to tell you something that will corrupt you to take you out of the presence of God? Huh? We must reason things out in our head, you know, church. We must reason things out in our head. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I did not hear, like Bishop always used this analogy, where he says somebody will just hear that somebody says something about them, and you didn't hear, but you vexed with the person. You didn't hear it for yourself. You didn't see when they do it, but you just get up and vex with the person. No, you are foolish because you did not guard your heart. You did not guard your heart with all diligence. So what you did, when you hear the rubbish and the lies, you allow it to go in and it bear root, spring up root of bitterness. So you see this person and the person called to you and you're mad. Because you allow the enemy to get in. And you could be a, 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 a good person, a good Christian standing, but now you have a flaw. Amen? And that is the reason why God has to keep us on the wheel. Some of us, you're not tired of being on the wheel? Huh? You, the potter have to keep putting you on the wheel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I have a, 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 a piece of jewelry that I love and I hold dearly to my heart. And it fell apart and I took it to the jeweler. Jeweler. Jeweler, jewelry. Okay. A twist tongue twister right there. I took it to get it fixed, right? They fixed it and I was happy and I was on my way home with it. And two days after I fall apart again. No, it's targeting on my nerves now. So I decided, you know what? They didn't fix it properly. So I did my own research online, bless God, and I get the stuff and I they have something they call jewelry glue. And I bought it and I fixed it. And I said, Bishop. Anytime you have any issue with your jewelry, just look over here because I got the glue. So Bishop laugh. Anyways, two days after that, it fall apart again. So now I say, you know what? I'm just going to leave it be. Why? Because it's not that I don't still love it and I still have it and I still hold it dear. But it's giving me too much trouble. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. This it, it, it won't stay together. Hallelujah. So I'm not going to allow that piece of jewelry to frustrate me anymore. Amen. So I put it aside in my drawer. And one day when I have free time, I might go back and revisit and see how I can fix it. But for now, I park it right there. Some people allow things to let them fall apart. Hallelujah. That is not holding them together. Because my jewelry don't hold me together. It is Jesus who hold me together. Hallelujah. And some people, you get up and your favorite wig doesn't seem like it's working. You don't come to church. Because it's what's holding you together. Hallelujah. Some, it's true. It is true. Some people, they get up and their favorite heel break. They're not coming to church. Because that's what's holding you together. When you get to the place where you know that God is holding you together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If your wig don't work, you're still showing up. Hallelujah. If your heel break, you're still showing up. Hallelujah. Because there's going to come a time when all these things, it's going to fade away. It's going to pass. 
buy a new car. The value changed the moment you drive it off the parking, uh, the, the car mart. The value changed. Hallelujah. But Jesus never changed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus never changed. Hallelujah. Bless God. And if you hold him more valuable than anything else in your life, in your house, in your family, you will find yourself staying in tune continually and your oil will not run out. Bless God. Put your hands together for Jesus and tonight. Put your hands together for him. Bless God. We are going to look. We look at the oil and now we're going to look at the lamp. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. The lamp we know is the container that holds the oil. The lamp. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is the carrier of the oil. So these women had lamps. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's quickly turn to Leviticus 24 verse 22. Leviticus bishop. 24 verses 2. Did I say 22 first? Oh my God. Leviticus 24, chapter 24, verses 2. Okay. Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee. Pure oil, olive, beaten for the light to, ca to cause the lamps to burn continually. Now, the lamp is what the oil is in. It's a container. And the oil, the, the oil keeps the lamp ablaze. That's why sometimes we are stuck in motion, stuck in tradition because we are out of oil. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. The lamp is the container. Bless God. And hallelujah. The olive, as we spoke earlier, is a symbol of purity. The oil represents your consecration, your purity. Hallelujah. The presence and the influence of the Holy Ghost that's in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we need our bodies. Our bodies represent the lamp. Amen? The Holy Ghost lives on the, our inside. Hallelujah. You cannot take a body of pure flesh to heaven. Pure flesh means carnality. Pure flesh, because this is flesh. This is not going nowhere. The, there's a song that said, This house of clay... Is going to burst wide open. Bars of bones that holds our soul. is going to free our soul. Bless God. Thank you. We don't need this body. This body is for this life. Hallelujah. Thank you. But when, so when I talk about flesh, I don't want you to think about first lady, but my flesh, it hurts. No, this flesh here that we have is for here and for those that will go to hell because they're going to suffer. Amen. And in this body is sufferation. So as much as we suffer here, we don't want to suffer for eternity. Come on. You don't believe that there's a hell and it's real? It is real. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The fire does not quench. The worms, they don't die. Hallelujah. Demons will be tormenting you. You will have your memory. You will remember all the sermons and the witness and everything that was uh, that somebody came to you with about Christ and telling you to escape hell. You will remember it. You remember your mother talking to you, your father talking to you, grand aunt, everybody. You remember watching T.D. Jakes and Bishop Marlon Chowers and all the bishops and the pastors that preach hell, escape hell. And you laugh and do your own thing. You will hear it and you remember it. Bless God. Those that know about God and refuse him, they will get their reward. There are some people who die not knowing the true God. What do we say about those people? Oh, first lady, so if I don't know that there is a heaven and there is a hell, bless God, and, 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 and I die, hallelujah, what, what, what's going to happen to me? Am I going to get a squeeze in? 
Nobody can squeeze anybody in. It's not in Jamaica. When we go, I was say, squeeze the one here for a minute. No, there will be no bligh. Bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you die in sin, nobody can change it. A lot of people, there was, there was a family. They are all Christians. Most of them are Christians. Your grandmother, auntie, everybody's Christian. And there's, there's a family member that died a vicious death. He got baptized, never went back to church, didn't took right in a fellowship. But he knows God because he grew up in the church. And at the funeral, after the body was in the grave, they were bickering where he went. Some said he died in sin. He died in the life of adultery. Look how he died. He died bad. So he's, he's gone to hell. There is no, 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 no. There is no two way about it. And the sister started to cry and said, don't say that. You don't know what his last word was. What if death came sudden? Hmm? What if death came sudden and there was no time to think? Would you have a last word? What if the person that you love so dear that refused the Lord God, hallelujah, do not have the opportunity like the thief on the cross that said, have mercy upon me. Oh God, that come quick and swift. Some people, they're going about their business and a car wheel just hit them, zoom, and they find themselves in the other life. It's either heaven or hell. Some people don't like when first they teach because they said, oh God, first they talk about hell and it feels so real and, 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 and it hurts my feelings. Hallelujah, because I have, unsafe fa I have unsafe family members too. And guess what? Some of them are mad at me. But I have to preach and teach it because I want them to come into the light. Hallelujah. I was never born saved. As a matter of fact, I got baptized at the age of 14. And I love the Lord. I was excited for Jesus. I remember what my testimony was when I stood in the river. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I remember lifting my hands and repeating thy vows be upon me, O God, until death. I remember going under the water. I remember coming up. Hallelujah. And I remember the songs that they sing. And I was excited. Hallelujah. I remember going home with my wet clothes. And I'm so happy my mother was not saved. My father was not saved. But I was saved. Went back to church because it was an early morning baptism. And I and immediately I was given over to an older lady to be my mentor. So she was my mother. And she would check on me. And if I go to church and I don't have a slip on, she would make one for me and she would bring it to me. And she will encourage me to pray and read scriptures. That's how I grew up in Jamaica. But after a while... I became dry. Everybody was piercing their ears. Mommy said, not allowed. You know what I did? I pierced mine too. So now I become rebellious. I, I, I start to take on, the, I, I, I stopped being a wise virgin and I start being a foolish virgin because I wanted to run with the masses. I wanted to fit in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. And I backslidden. I backslidden. And I believe to be honest, before I was a Christian, I think my life was just tormented by my siblings. You know, you have sibling rivalry, but it was, it's something that you could live with because it's your sibling. But after you go, but after I backslide and, and I went back into the world, there was a different feeling that get, I, be, I think that's when I really matured into becoming angry. Anybody ever seen angry? Have you ever seen angry bird? Angry bird, the one that explode, that was me. I would get angry for nothing. Hallelujah. Bless God. If you see me quiet, leave me alone because I'm thinking. And if I get angry, I'm going to even think more. Hallelujah. And I was just so, I was always angry and mad and, and everything get me upset quickly. But now looking back, I understand why. I went out of the presence of God and went and go mingle with seven Different demons come and live into my one little house. Hallelujah. So you can imagine confusion living in one room. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then you have anxiety living in one room. And then you have all different type of emotion happening. Hallelujah. And all these demons, they're hanging out. And someday they just want to cause hell because they're not getting along. And I just become so tormented. And I, would, I, I didn't want to go to church. I resent going to church. 
So I was never always like this. I messed up too. But along the way, hallelujah, something happened. Along the way, the Lord took me on a path that it breaks me. And all I have was prior. Ha! Have you ever been in a situation where you have mommy and daddy and sister and brother, hallelujah, and they have their oil and you have none? Hmm? But all you have is prayer. Mighty God and all you can do is look up and cry out, Father, have mercy. And the more you cry, the weaker you get. Hallelujah. But you keep crying because you say, God, I'm coming back. Hallelujah. Just keep the bleeding side open because I'm coming back. Hallelujah. God took me on a ride. He took me on a journey. All I had was my knees. Sometimes I prayed until my knees hurt. And that's why it is not strange for me to pray and pray long. Sometimes I pray and, and Bishop will fall asleep and wake up and hear me praying. Remember one time I was praying and Elijah and Judah wake up and say, Mommy's still praying? And Elijah said, Yeah, she's been praying for 17 hours. And they were laughing. Hallelujah. But that's what I know. When trouble came my way, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I had no oil in my lamp, but I know, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God Almighty, the one. Hallelujah. Thank you who went to Calvary for me. I knew the one that said he will remarry the backslider. I knew the one that said his ears are open to my cry, and I cried to him. And then I started to go back to church. Then I feel my life coming back. And then I start to go back and I continue to go back until I decided I don't want to live like this no more. I want to go back home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Where I am safe, where I am secure. Hallelujah. Where I'm in the hands of the Lord. So I took myself and I put it back in the hands of God. Maybe if I didn't, I would be a junkie somewhere. Or maybe I would have been dead. Or maybe I would have been a sad story. Amen. We all have choices. Sometimes we are in the hands of God. And we are living for Christ. And we are doing the right thing. But because it doesn't feel popular. And it doesn't feel like it is what everybody is doing. Because it's not norm for everybody to live holy. It's not norm for everybody to be truthful. It's not norm for everybody to love their neighbors as their self. Amen. It's not norm for us to be givers. Hallelujah. And not receivers. It's not a norm for us to be kind and gentle to others. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. It's not the norm. So we feel out of place. So we try to fit in. But when you fit in, that's when you truly fall out of place. So it's okay to be unique. It's okay to have oil in your lamps. The lights are on. Keep your light, keep your oil in your lamp. Let nobody tell you, throw out the oil. Look, we have lights. No, keep your oil in your lamps. Because sometimes, hallelujah, you are the only one that is burning. Hallelujah. You're the only one that can start a fire again in somebody else that their light have gone out. Hallelujah. So you have to keep the fire burning. So you have to keep your body holy, church. I don't know how much we can emphasize that from behind the pulpits or over the phones, hallelujah, or in text messages, hallelujah, when we interact with the body of Christ, how much they're going to say it when they, we go to prayer breakfast, conventions. It's a reason, it's a, it's, it's a warning. Because if your body and your lifestyle, hallelujah, is not kept for the master's use, hallelujah, you will be thrown out. You're going to be shut out in utter darkness. Who like to be in darkness? Who like when current gone? No one, right? Bless God. We all like the light. You like when you go home and you flip the switch, everything light up. You flip the switch and something don't happen. If you're on a phone call, you stop. It gets your attention. 
Jesus is the light of the world. And if you are in him, light is supposed to be in you. Amen. Your life is supposed to be light as well. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless God. So we need to have our lamps fill. Fill with oil. When your lamp is filled with oil, it means that you're living in the presence of God. You carry the presence with you. You carry the glory. People see you and they know you. Demons see you coming and they run. They have to move because you, you're a carrier of light. You carry the glory of God. You will, people will be praying for a situation. And you, you, you go, you hear about it and you go and you pray. And after you go and you pray, situation changes. Why? Because there is something in you that other people don't have. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. You can give an encouraging word to somebody and you deposit something in their spirit. Why? Because you carry the glory. You carry the presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your words are not just mere words. But they are words of life. Words of life. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. So we need to what? Have oil. Maintain our oil. We need our lamps to be ready. You need a lamp cannot work without a week. Who know what the week is? Yes. Nobody know what the week is. They're laughing. The lamp of a week. And it's not how you feel. And it's not the week Monday to, to Sunday to Sunday. Amen. It's the week that the thing that goes in the oil. Amen. So when you put, and, and, and when, you, when you have your week, hallelujah, and it's in the oil, all of a sudden, it is saturated. It's a piece of cloth that they, that they, they, they make a, a certain way. And it's in the lamp. And when it gets into the oil, it's saturated. Hallelujah. And the, it pulls the oil up. And when you light the match, sometime the week start to give off some black smoke. Anybody ever get that yet? And you said, and you use your finger and knock it so. You see, you see the light, you see, you see, the, you, you see it start to change. Bless God. You see, some a real country girl. You see, you see the fire start to change, amen, from this ugly red. And you see a little blue, and, and, and you say, yes, and you put, but all of a sudden, it come up back black. And everything just get black. If you're not careful, all the face black. So for those who don't know about lamps, yes. So then you say, mommy, the, oh, something wrong with the, oh, with the lamp. And she said, oil in there? You say, yes, mommy, but it's, 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 not, it's, 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 it's not burning properly. It's not giving no nice light. So she said, okay, pass me the scissors. And she come around with the scissors and she, she turned it up a little bit. And she cut it. And all of a sudden, the light, sometimes we need to be clean, purged. Come on, church of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we need to be purged. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need to check ourselves. Just like we have summer now, spring now. A lot of us are going to be doing the spring cleaning, right? So you walk through your closet, and anything that don't look up to date, you take it out. Anything that can't fit, because we get all these comfy, uh, you call it comfort food over the winter, and some things can't fit anymore. We're going to put them on the side, or we say, you know what, I'm not going to give this away. I'm going to put it in the back and wait until I lose all these, these love angles. I'll just put my dress back on. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. We need to be purged. So she will trim the lamp. And it will give beautiful light. Bless God. And there's a thing about the light. Sister Tamika. The lamp. It has this thing on it. It's called the gauge. Bless God. And if sometimes I feel like it's not bright enough. Being a little presumptuous little girl as I was. I will go burn it up. Bless God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. And the, and, and, and the place will just get bright. But when it's time to go to bed, you have to turn it down. So you gauge yourself in God. Hallelujah. Are you hot on fire? Or are you just want to just burn steady? Because some people, they burn out, you know. Burn out real quick. Because other people love to burn, just shine up. Boom. All of a sudden, they don't know that the we everything just stuck out. And the oil goes out. Hallelujah. But there are some people, they are steady. Hallelujah. In the morning, you find them fresh and blooming. And in the evening, they still a bloom. While some, in the morning, 
their flesh and blooming like the impatient and in the evening they withered away. We need to know how to maintain our oil and how to keep burning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So if your lamp needs trimming, you don't have to walk around and tell everybody. You just know that you probably need to just take some time with God. Get into the word. Go on fasting. You don't feel like how you used to feel. You find yourself drifting. Bless God. You find yourself like there is uh, no connection and you feel bored and you feel worn out. Hallelujah. You need to purge. Your lamp needs trimming, man. Bless God. All of us need it. There are times when I just want time alone with God. I want to stay in his presence. Hallelujah. I, there are times when I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I evaluate my own self. Because who can evaluate you better than you, Sister Debbie? Nobody. Not even your husband. You can evaluate yourself better than anyone else. And when you get honest and you're honest with the Lord and you say, God, oh, hallelujah, I think I need to do more of this, Father. But I find myself getting tired when it's time to pray. Lord, help me. Lord, give me ideas how I can come up with praying more frequently so that I can be in constant communication with you. As I was teaching the, the new converts, David said he prays daily. Some of us, we miss prayer meeting and it feels like nothing to us. We miss out our own personal prayer time with the Lord and it feels like nothing. It, become, it becomes a norm until you find yourself not praying. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. But a prayerful Christian is a Christian that is leading a successful life. Because prayer is communication with God. If you have con constant communication with God, he knows you. You're not a stranger to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But if you only pray when you're in problem, you just, I don't know what we say. If somebody only come and look for you when they need help to borrow some money from you, Sister Jess said, well, how do you feel about that person? Y yes, you feel used. A lot of people think they can, oh, they have the word that they call it. They can prank God or they can, um, they have a word that they use. They feel like they can, they can trick the Lord. So they say, God, if you bless me with this, I'll serve you. If you do this for me, I'll serve you. And the Lord knows your heart. He knows that as soon as you get it, you're not going to do nothing. But he's, he go ahead and he bless you anyways. Sometimes he do it just to show you who you really are. Bless God. And you took it and you run off and say, oh, I trick him. Huh? I trick him. Many people, they will come to church and they will come to the altar and bishop or Whoever the speaker is will preach the word and they will be convicted. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They walk in as fools. Bless God. Hallelujah. And the word is preached and they're convicted and the Holy Spirit is working upon them. And the Lord is knocking on their heart door. And they come to the altar and they accept the prayer. And when they said, what's the reason for you? Would you like to give your life to the Lord? I'm not ready yet. I'm not worried. I'm not ready. Yet. Why? Why are you not ready? I don't even know, but I'm not ready. You don't know, but you're not ready. What if you said you're not ready? Amen. And something should happen to you. How would you feel going back to God? You're not ready with your two feet, but you come back with one foot. Hmm. You're not ready with two eyes, but you come back with one eye. You're not ready being a whole, happy, healthy person, but you come back, I'm ready being sick. People will see that. That is unfair, right? How do we think God feels? We are, we are created in his likeness. We, just like how we have emotions. Because if God is love, it means that he has emotions. Huh? And if, uh, he has lavished his love on us. He has poured it out on us. There has been some, some men and some women in this world, hallelujah, that they will give everything to their significant other. That's who we are to Christ. We are a significant other. He is the bridegroom coming back for his bride. He died for you. He poured out everything on you and he said, keep the fire burning. Keep your lamp trim and ready because I'm coming back, but I'm not sure what time. And something happened, and he tarries a little longer. 
bless God. And he has given you everything. You know, there's, there's a lot of stories coming out of Jamaica where men have left their family back home and they come to this country or other countries to seek a better life. And they're taking care of the kids and they're taking care of the woman that they left there. They probably go back and visit and they go and come. And when it's time for those children to come here, DNA said, you're not the father. Mm. What do you do? How do you think that person feel after they spend all this money? Because immigration money is not, it's, 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 it's not, it's not like go spend $20. No, you have to spend for the process as it goes. Amen. And you have to spend to do DNA tests for four kids. None of them is yours. And to make matters worse, all of them is four different father. It is sad. It is very, very sad. And that is the reason why you find people losing their mind. People, people killing other people. Some men will be good enough and they will probably just adopt the children. And some just can't handle it. Huh? You trick somebody in taking care of somebody else's child. 15 years, 10 years. And you know the truth. I'm probably still a text something from the man undercover, the right father. Mm? We do not want to be Christians and, and live in a life like we are tricking God, tricking him, coming to church, dressing up as Christians. Hallelujah. Looking the part, but not living the part. So we need to be ready because believe it or not, as it was in the days of Noah, so it is today. And the door is going to be shut. Where will you find yourself? Take a minute or a few seconds to ponder that. Where will I find myself? Will I be on the inside looking out? Or will I be on the outside crying mercy? They say mercy gone. Too late judgment come christians we have to live ready we have to live ready some people they have been in church all their lives and demons can identify them and say jesus i know who are you you have no power you're powerless huh you have to live a life of authority when you're living in right standing, when you're in right standing with God and you're living a righteous life and a life that is ready. You live in authority. You walk in authority. Hallelujah. You can command things and it will happen. You can speak things and it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Effectively, quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But when you are living on the other side, it's a struggle because if you're not living right, it means that you're not right. If you're living right, you're okay. But if you're not living right, it means that there's a problem, right? Amen. So we need to be a church that is ready. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus tonight. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. Our minds need to be ready. Our heart need to be ready. Our spirit man need to be ready. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We must keep our mind and our heart right with God. Is thine heart right with God? Do you have unforgiveness in it? Do you hold grudge? Are you quick to get bitter and angry at people? Come on, hallelujah. We need to get rid of that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless God. We need to keep guide, guiding, gliding in the light of God. When we are not living right, we hide. Because if the light should shine on us, we'll be exposed. But when we are living right... We just stay in the light. Hallelujah. We are not afraid. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, David, when Goliath taunt Israel, he taunt Israel day and night. He says, send me a man. Send me a man. Anybody. Send me a man. Send me your best. Because he, he believed in himself that he could take out Israel. And everybody was hiding. 
Even the king was frustrated because the army would not go and face this giant. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us, our family, have giants in our life, and you are called to be the giant slayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But in order for you to take on that giant, you need to live in the light. Hallelujah. David was living in the light. Hallelujah. David knows how, hallelujah, to keep the fire burning because he have daily communication with God. Hallelujah. And when he heard the enemy spoke against his God, it stirred him. How much of us ever stand up and hear the enemy talking against our religion and against our God, the one who suffered for us. Hallelujah. And we keep our mouth shut because we don't want to lose our job hallelujah because we we don't want to look some way hallelujah we don't want anybody to know that we are christian david took offense to what the enemy was saying against and about his god hallelujah because he know that he walks in the light hallelujah and because he knows that he carried the presence of the true and living god david stood up and said I will challenge this uncircumcised Philistine. I will go up against Goliath. An entire army was hiding out. Be careful of the company that you keep because sometimes you are the David. Huh? Bishop always preached and he said, do not hang out with chickens when you're an eagle. And do not measure up yourself with midget because you say, I'm taller. Because you want to feel taller. Challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. Everybody's saying, well, you know what? I did 21 day of fasting in January. Not fasting for the rest of the year. That's that's all the fast that I'm doing for the year. Challenge yourself. I'm gonna go on a I'm gonna go on my own fasting. I'm gonna have my own fasting time. Hallelujah. I, I'm not gonna wait on, on, on Wednesdays only to fast. I'm gonna because I want more of God. Hallelujah. I want to feel his tangible anointing. I want to feel his touch. I want to hear his voice. Hallelujah. Because the more you fast, the more you kill the fleshy man and the more the spirit come alive and the more you will stay in tune with God hallelujah and the more your fire will burn and you will be ablaze hallelujah for Christ so when the enemy comes hallelujah instead of you hiding and calling everybody to help you pray you run up hallelujah because you have authority you have dunamos you have the power that lives on your inside to cut off the head of Goliath and stamp him on the feet come on church you you have power on your inside but you must keep the fire burning the fire must be burning the fire must be burning your fire cannot be burning i am bad mind some christians they bad mind they want to hear nothing good about anybody sometimes you come to church all month long You've been battling, hallelujah, with flu. You know, we're coming at the flu season. Headaches, hallelujah, nausea. And one Sunday morning, you get up and the hands of God is on you. And you put on your dress and you walk into church and you're just dancing because you feel new and revived. And they say, why she not sick today? Why you can't be happy that I'm, that I'm healed? Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you. So, well, let's go check her out. Huh? And they go ask you if you buy a new car. What's going on? No, it's Jesus. Come on. No, it's Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless God. Some Christians are so bad mind. You cannot be in right standing with God and you have bad mind. Corrupt. Your thoughts are corrupt towards people. Nothing good ever come out of your mouth towards people. See, I'm now living this way where if i have nothing good to say i rather don't say anything because i learned from a wise lady some time ago she made this joke she said you know what let me not say nothing before mouth open up and tour jump out before i open my mouth and something come out that i should not say because when it comes the spoken word you cannot take it back amen and sometimes we wound each other with our words. Sometimes we wound our family members. We wound co-workers. We wound people who even mean us well with our words. And we might say, I'm sorry. 
And they might say, I accept your apology. But there is an enemy that we all have in common that every now and again, he will bring it back to you to make you feel some kind of way. So be careful of your words. We want to use cotton ball words. Cotton ball words are soft, kind, loving words. Compliment somebody. Wow, Sister Devon, you wear that dress well. Nice color on you. Don't Sister Devon, wear by it. Think it'll fit me. You know, people are like that. They will see you in something and it looks good and they will not tell you. Instead, they come and say, how much you pay for it? Where you buy it? I'm going to get me one. And they tell you straight to your face. Compliment somebody. We're not in competition. Whenever the church is in competition, if a church is in competition, that church is in problem. We can't have a choir where choir members are in competition trying to outsing each other. It's going to sound like a screaming band. Amen? But we complement each other when we sing together in one voice. Hallelujah. If you're a screamer, do a solo. Say, so Bishop, I don't want to be on the choir. Let me sing by myself because sometimes I want to go high and go real low. And the choir, it ain't working because sometimes they're going low and I find myself going high. Amen? Because you want, you, you, some people, they can really sing, you know. They want to show off their voice. And how they can go up with their head voice. And they go down in their belly. And then do all type of stuff. Amen? And they, they harmonize. They can't fit in with the choir. So they just sing a solo by themselves. Amen? And nothing is wrong with that. Because that is their gift. Bless God. But when we work together in unity, it's beautiful. There is beauty in unity. I just made that up. It's true, but it's true. Thank you, Jesus. There is beauty in unity. Come on, put your hands together for me. I did good on that one. There is beauty in unity. Truly, if you see any family working together, don't it look beautiful? If you see a company, or organization working together, isn't it beautiful? So why can't the church work together? Look at our beautiful um, event and planning department. When they come together and they work, they synchronize, they, they work together. You have two brothers go up and get the other. Then you see the ladies coming back with the right stuff. You hear nobody complaining or blaming anybody. And when everything was over, they all clean up together. They were uniform and they were unified. And that makes it beautiful. But how does it look when we are under one name and there's a tug of war? It's very distasteful. So let us... Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Live with clean mind. Think all things good. All things pure. All things holy. Do not think on the things that are bad and negative. And if somebody brings something negative to you about another sister or another brother, if you're a true Christian, you will rebuke them. You will say, come on, stop it. How would you feel? If they say that about you. I was listening to a, a, a preacher, a bishop, and, and she says that there's a lady that she mentors. And the lady posts something on her Facebook page. And immediately I think of my husband. Because he, he, he sometimes he do that to me. Bless God. And she said when she saw the page, she called the lady. And she said to the lady, hi, how are you? And the lady said, I'm well. And she said, I'm calling you because I am your, uh, you said that I am a mother to you and that I am a voice that the Lord placed in your life. And if I am that to you, I'm going to ask that you go over to your Facebook page and remove that post because it looks nothing like what you represent. And the lady who is a business owner, she said, well established, a grown woman that could be your mother, said, I'm sorry, Apostle, I'm sorry. It, I shouldn't have not posted. It It has been there too long. I'm going to go right now. And she apologized and went and take it off. Amen? Think pure things. 
things that represent the kingdom of God. If she was all in her head, she would say, who are you talking to? Don't I pay the most tithes? Huh? You're going to tell me what to post now? Huh? I'm not, I'm not going to go take my post. I'm going to keep my post up because she's all in her mind and she's all fleshy and she wants to watch her thought. Because sometimes we think things and we put it out there. But is it right? Like Bishop always said, somebody reading your post, you're not going to see nothing Christ-like in this. Please take it down. Sometimes I have to walk back over there. Take down my post. Not that I meant it to hurt anybody. But when somebody read it, I may hurt their feelings. And I'm not, and we are not here to hurt people's feelings. Amen. We are not here to be stumbling blocks in other people's way. Amen. So we want just evaluate things before we do them. Our heart, guard it with all diligence. Do not harbor unforgiveness in your heart. Let it go. Release it to the one who can hold it and take it. His name is Jesus. Forgive your husband and your wife quickly before night come down. Just in case you pull the pillow from under your head. The Bible said you must not let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't be angry. Amen. Sometimes we can't even sleep because the situation keeps us up. And the other persons, they are sleeping. And you're up walking around drinking 20 cups of coffee. Planning how you're going to deal with this one. And the person is there snoring, snoring, snoring. Why do you think sometimes some woman burn up some man? Lord of his mercy. Truly, you know. Because they are angry. Or the man would in turn. Because men tend to inflict wounds. Amen. Woman, they want... You to get the pain and they want you to feel the pain sudden. But men, they tend to inflict wounds. Amen? There are, there, are, there are times when you're seeing stuff where females will boil up stuff and throw on men while they're sleeping. That's ruthless. That's wicked. Can you imagine that heart? Do you see that heart? Nobody just, if somebody's been attacked and they have something in their hand and they throw it in self-defense. But can you imagine you feed the man? He eat and he belly full. Delilah now, come on. And while he's there laying and he's laying on the couch and he's, he's, he's watching the, the, the TV, hallelujah, your heart is so bitter, pounding with hatred, hallelujah. Thank you, and you keep on boiling the oil and he think that you were about to cook him some pork. And you boil the oil and you put pimento and pepper and ginger and everything in it. Hallelujah. I mean, it's his church return, you just dose him. That's somebody's child. Come on, purify your heart, man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some men, they will use the machete and they will beat the woman or they will trap them with it. That's a person that you hug and tell them that you love two days ago or the night before. What change? It's the heart. Evil. Guard your heart with all diligence. Hallelujah. We do not want root of bitterness. Hallelujah. Luke 11 verses 33. Hallelujah to 36. Hallelujah. We must make certain that God's words shine through us. Let the word of God shine through you. So others can see it. Every time you think something unclean. Put it into captivity and said, I must think on all things pure, all things good. Amen? Bless God. I just want to encourage you tonight not to be a foolish virgin. Let us not walk as fools. First time I hear this saying was from uh, Sister Logan. She used to always say, I don't know if you remember, if you remember saying it. She said, God called fools, but he don't keep them. She said that to me when I used to work at Park Crescent. Bless God. God called fools, but he don't keep them. You can come in as a novice, and after how many years you're still a novice. Something must change when you come in contact with God. Amen? Bless God. Or you will find yourself on the outside, on the outskirt. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We need to allow the light of God to shine through us. Do not let somebody 
that is not living the life that you are living, as long as you know that you're living a life that is worthy, where if the, the Lord shall appear, you will be ushered in to the marriage supper, allow you to end up on the outside. Do not allow your children to cause you to miss heaven. Do not allow your husband, your wife, to cause you to miss heaven. Do not allow your best church friend. Because a lot of people, they come to church by themselves. They found salvation by themselves. But while mingling, they, have, they find a friend. Amen? And that best friend can take them out of God. Doesn't have to be a male, doesn't have to be a female, but that best friend can tell you something that breaks you and take you out of the will of God. Do not be led by people, but be led by the Spirit. That the Spirit of God rules you. Um, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. People say something, okay. I, I hear what you say, but I'm gonna seek God for myself. I'm going to seek counsel. Hallelujah. And if after you seek counsel and the counsel that you get still doesn't satisfy you, go to God. He will answer you. If he don't answer you by speaking audibly, he will bring you to the word. Or you will hear a song. Or you will hear a sermon and you will get your confirmation. Hallelujah. But do not follow. Hallelujah. Anybody. And allow them to foolishly lead you out of your blessing and out of your place because there are many people who have left their place beer hallelujah because they allow other people to take them out when they should be well on their way doing so much more all of us we have souls that are assigned to us whether it be family members that we live with whether it be co-workers whether it be somebody that you will come in contact with they're assigned to you do not allow anybody to cause you not to carry your assignment and to complete it. We are all on the same journey. We are all serving the same God, but we all have our own individual salvation. Nobody can take your soul and give it to God and say, this is mine. Some people, you will do the work and they'll take it and get the credit for it. No, it doesn't go like this. It doesn't go like that with God. Whatsoever a man sow, that shall he. God bless you all. As I turn it to Bishop Chowers, you could stand. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet as we're going to uh, collect the tithes and offering. Come up with your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. We are made up in our mind that we are going to stay ablaze. Come on. Are you going to stay ablaze for Christ? Are you going to keep the fire burning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you going to live right? Hallelujah. Are you going to live upright? Walk in the light. Hallelujah. Carry the glory of the living God and Take it wherever you go. Hallelujah. You're called to be wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Come on, we don't walk as fools. We don't allow foolish men to counsel us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. Hallelujah. Because foolish men, foolish women, they know nothing. They just flatter with their mouths. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. But we are wise, hallelujah. We seek the counsel of the Lord. The word of God says we must, uh, what? In all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path. He knows the way to take, hallelujah. He knows where to go. Follow Christ. Follow Jesus. As we take up the offering tonight, hallelujah. His voice makes the difference. When he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes a difference. And I follow one day at a time. His voice makes the difference. When he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind. 
It's the only voice I hear that makes a difference. And I'll follow one day at a time. Bless God. Hallelujah. Come put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. I see two, um, two things just now. One little girl that I was thinking about. Little Maya. I'm so happy to see you. Put your hands together for her. She was not feeling good. I haven't seen her since prayer breakfast, but she was on my mind. And I said, you know, I was going to text uh, Sister Logan and find out how she's doing. Bless God. But I'm happy to see you, Maya. And I pray that you will continue to grow in the strength and admiration of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I see you too, little Miss Pinky. Hallelujah. Bless God for you. Thank God. And I just, I want to thank God, hallelujah, for each and every one that came out tonight. We bless the Lord for you. I hope that the word that I've gone forth strengthen you. I hope it encourages us. Hallelujah. I hope we will go home, pick up the word, evaluate ourselves. Hallelujah. And have a made up mind that my salvation is mine. Church. Hallelujah. As I'm about to bless the offering tonight hold on to your salvation like you hold on to your visa hold on to it because you're going to need it bless god most righteous god and everlasting father as we come into your presence tonight, i thank you for your people who came out i thank you for the word that i've gone out oh god almighty even me myself oh god as you have used me oh god almighty lord god to give this word tonight oh god it has helped me in so many ways father i thank you lord god almighty that we are prepared and ready oh god almighty for the days ahead thank you lord god for this house thank you for your people who comes oh god almighty and function in different area be a blessing to them no no god pour out a fresh anointing upon them pour in fresh oil and wine oh god help them lord god to stay in your presence help us not to oh god wander away help us to keep our hearts and our mind in tune help us to keep our vessels clean and help us to be in right standing with you oh god as we communicate daily father we thank you for the offering bless your people who gave tonight and those that did not have to give i ask that you will bless them in a special way so that they too will have remember the entire christ-like worship center oh god family i pray them on tonight those that are sick and at home strengthen them bless them heal them oh god lord god almighty remember our bishop tonight oh god bishop marlon showers i pray his strength oh god father i pray that you will rest upon him as he's about to go and preach on saturday Lord God, I pray that the word will come forth with power and with clarity. Father God, I pray, Jesus Christ, that you will be with him every step of the way. Lord God, whatever I fail to ask tonight, fail not to grant it as I put everything in your hands and I release everything in your control. Have your own sweet divine way. As the church say, amen. Bless God. We are saying the benediction now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne. To the only wise God, be glory, honor, dominion, majesty, and power. Now until Jesus comes, God's people say, amen. God bless you all. Greet someone before you.